This is Lisa Lyons. She's running for the lieutenant governor along with uh, Bill Schuette as the governor. And she's going to take your questions and she'll tell you whatever you want to know. <laughs> well, I might not be able to tell you everything you want to know, but thank you so very much for taking the time to come out here and for welcoming me here in St. Clair County. Um, I started out the day in Grand Rapids and heading right over here uh, into St. Clair County, and then we'll spend uh, the rest of the afternoon and evening in Macomb County. Well, hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I just wanted to uh, come out and thank you for all the work that you guys are doing. These candidates here, um, these candidates here, we work really hard, and you know, Pam, you guys can all attest. And we just, we can't win this election without you. And this, we say this every year. This election is important. It's important because we have one choice to make, and that's: are we going to are we going to go backwards to the lost decade? Or are we going to move Michigan forward and continue the comeback that we've seen under Republican leadership for the last eight years? That's, it's as simple as that. And we really need to make sure that when we're getting out, when we're talking to our friends and our neighbors and, and um, all, of, all of our family members, they understand where we were. Michigan was flat on its back. Um, you know, I ran for the House of Representatives in 2010. Nobody was immune from the lost decade, the policies that Jennifer Granholm implemented and that Gretchen Whitmer supported and helped get enacted. We have to make sure that we remember we went from 15% unemployment rate, 75% of our home sales were results of foreclosure, and our families were leaving the state in droves because nobody could find a job. And Contrast that with the Republican policies that we put into place. We've got record low unemployment level. Personal income is rising. Unemployment level has declined. We've got our families are finding jobs. They're coming back to this state. And that's what it's all about. And those are the results that you can't deny. Those are the results that matter. It's about results and not resistance. And so we need to make sure that when people go to the ballot box on November 6th, they're voting for Michigan's future. They're voting to continue the comeback, to continue moving our state forward. And I, you know, I know that it's a, it's a long, drawn-out process to run, uh, to run a campaign, to um, to put our boots on the ground every day. You know, we've just we roll up our sleeves, we work, we talk to people, and most of all, too, we listen. We listen to the concerns that um, that our friends and neighbors have in the community because when you listen, you're able to lead, and that's what um, that's what I'm so excited about being on this ticket with Bill Schuette, um and what he is going to help do for Michigan. Um, you know, he's listened to the residents of Michigan. He's listened to people who say we've paid way too much for way too long for car insurance. And he's listened and he's heard it's time to lower our auto insurance rates. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue the work that we did to grow our economy and to grow jobs. And, you know, we've come a long way when we got rid of the Michigan business tax, when we, when we implemented, um, you know, a fair, uh, a fair and consistent and simple uh, tax structure here in this state for our businesses. But it's time, it's time for our hardworking taxpayers, our families, to see tax relief. And so I know um, there's a lot of support out there for uh, reducing, rolling back uh, the income tax increase that Jennifer Granholm and Gretchen Whitmer implemented uh, way back when. So those are, those are policies that we're looking forward to because we've listened to the hardworking people of Michigan. And then finally, um, or additionally, uh, we've got the roads. We didn't get in this mess you know, overnight. We're not going to get out of it overnight. It's going to take a long time. But the Republican-led legislature and Republican Governor Rick Snyder have invested more in roads and bridges and fixing them in our state's history. And we've got to continue making funding our roads and fixing our roads a priority. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And then on the education front, we've come a long way providing tools for our teachers to make sure that, that uh, you know, kids are getting a quality education so that they can um, effectively learn how to read um, and be identified, struggling readers are identified. Because once you, once you get to a point where you've learned how to read, you've got to read to learn. And we don't want to leave our, we don't want to leave our students behind. So we want to make sure that we're really emphasizing literacy. We're giving our teachers and our schools the, the tools that they need to work with students. And, um, the, job, the jobs out there, the workforce, is going to a skilled trades workforce. And we worked really hard to kind of change this pendulum uh, from this 
stigma where if you don't go to a university for four years, you're not going to have a successful life. That's not true. And we need our kids to know that there are skilled jobs, there are jobs out there that we need a skilled workforce for. And so we're really going to build upon the work that the legislature has done in the past to um, make more opportunities for vocational education and technical uh, and career trades uh, school. So um, with that, I know I'm standing between you and Lon Do you want to add anything? I just, uh, our local no, candidates I matter. That's and great. Yeah, yeah, we've been out. Um, I'm Pam Hornberger. I'm the rep for the 32nd district, so probably the rep for some of you. Um, and yeah, we've been out knocking doors. I can't tell you how important it is for you to let your family, your friends, and people, your neighbors know you know, to get out and vote, whether it's absentee or to show up at the polls that day and vote Republican. Um, we, in, uh, in the State House and in the State Senate, are looking at um, keeping majority, but if we end up on the wrong side of the governor's race, it's going to be hell to pay, at, you know, at the state level. It will be complete gridlock. And um, right now we're still working. I know that the other Dan who serves with me, um, Dan Lowers and Shane, we were all on the right side of auto no-fault reform and came up um, short of votes. A lot of Democrats opposed it. There are a few Republicans opposed it. And you guys are the people that need to hold those people accountable. If we're going to get any of it done, you know, we're struggling to get that people to come on board, but we, we need to get that done. That's the number one thing that I hear when I knock doors. Please yes. do something about yep. auto no-fault. Yep. And then roads, the second thing. It's it doesn't matter. I've been all over the state knocking for candidates from Traverse City to Bloomfield Hills to um, Grass Lake Township. You know, it, that's the number one thing. <coughs> Everyone wants the roads fixed. Everyone wants auto no fault taken care of because we all realize that in all the states that surround us, you can get auto insurance for, you know, half of what we're paying in Michigan, sometimes even less than that. So it's something that I know Shane and I are passionate about fixing, but if we end up on the wrong side of the governor's race, which is our most important race right now, that nothing's going to get fixed. Well, and I could say the same thing. Um, I mean, this truly is, it is a, a, a true partnership between the governor's office and the legislature. You guys, you know, in St. Clair, Macomb, you guys have been very well represented. Uh, you've got very hardworking legislators. I was honored to work with so many of them. Um, but if we don't win at the top of the ticket, then they're not going to have that partner to work with in terms of making sure that making sure that our taxes are low and making sure that our you know we're doing what we need to do to relieve ratepayers for auto insurance. It really is. And then on the flip side, I thank you for all you're doing for Bill Schuette and for me for our for our election because. Part of that choice of moving forward isn't just the top of the ticket. We've got to elect our Republicans all the way from the top of the ticket all the way on down, you know, because the Democrats are hungry. They're after, they're after the House. They're after the Senate. They're after the Attorney General's office. They're after the Governor's office. They're after the Secretary of State. They haven't held these positions in so long that they're hungry. That's why it's so important that you guys, this motivation, this energy, the enthusiasm that's being shown out there on the ground, it's critical, and we've got, we've got oh gosh, what is it, three weeks and six days yes. to go. Three weeks and six days to go. I'm counting, I'm not gonna lie. I'm counting down, I hope you guys are too, because it is a marathon, uh, but we've gotta, we've gotta sprint this marathon the whole way, because if we don't elect our, um, if we don't elect our partners down the ticket, then, um, you know, Bill Schuette and I will have a tough time implementing the paycheck agenda and the people's agenda. So I just yeah. want to encourage you guys, stay motivated, um, stay with us, and if there's anything we can do, please let us know. I'm going to bring something up that people complain about all the time, property tax. I want to oh know gosh. what you people are going to do to get rid of the Headley Amendment and get that property tax down. You want to talk to me about it? I got a little plan. I'd love to. I'm a huge... I mean, I'm not going to be picky about where we provide tax relief for our hardworking, our hardworking folks. But I, you know, I come from a farming background. My dad was a farmer. My grandpa was a farmer. My great grandpa was a farmer. I've got some chickens and some kids, so I've got plenty of animals. But um, you know, we lease. We I'm the fourth generation to own our family's farm, and property taxes is huge. It's huge for farmers. It's huge for property owners, for homeowners. And I think we need to do everything we can when we look at a tax structure and we want to provide relief for our hardworking 
Michigan families, what does that look like? So, but like I said, I'm not picky about tax relief. No. I'll, Perfect. Well, and I know I'm between okay. you. I know we're between you and lunch, so we won't keep talking. We'll answer some questions. Oh, good. Okay. I do have two questions for both of you. One is the personal property tax, because I'm one of the county commissioners for St. Clair County. Uh, when are we going to see some funding to cover what we've lost? Which benefit? You know, how are we going to take care of residents? We've lost a lot of money. Which I'm I'm a small business owner. I also have a 160 acre farm, so uh, I'm great. It's gone. But the county still needs money back, and we were promised we'd get that money. It hasn't been coming. So if you could look at that, and that's one question. The other one is uh, Public Act 51 directly yep. affects roads. 90% of the roads within the state of Michigan are township roads. They're getting the short end of funding. And a lot of paved roads, they can't do it. You see some of these roads and township roads, and everybody uses them. People say, well, the cities, and I could ramble here, but yeah. they also got buses that I see running out in Riley Township, Berlin. And you, She rep represents in the house just about all the townships I have except for Berlin. I have six townships in half the city of Memphis. But some of those roads are just in terrible condition. They're not getting the fund to take care of those roads. We have a bridge on Huff Road, and we're going to be working with the uh, USDA. Jeff Bone, we have a meeting tomorrow. Potentially we can work with Kurt Weston. But uh, potentially at $2 million additional dollars on above and beyond projects we're doing with the Road Commission, but uh, that's something we're working on. But Public Act 51, we got the buses that run out there. Nobody's on it, but they are required to do that because right. they're getting the Village mm -hmm. of Emmett uh, money. They have nobody who's going to ride the bus. On their transit. They still have the to transit. run out there because they're getting that funding from, so the city of Port Aaron has the bus hub, but they're running buses with nobody in them back and forth. That's a lot of wasted money. Yeah. Well, in, in three weeks yeah. and six, day, six days, if Bill Shooty doesn't get elected governor, none of it's going to get fixed. Yeah. Well, it, it, and that's just that's what's going to happen. That one, uh, repealing that personal property tax was huge in making Michigan competitive for for job growth. So I, we did the right thing with that policy. It, it had to go. It was it was crushing, you know, our manufacturers and our job providers. And now, I, got I mean, the manufacturing in, plants and that money assisted me to buy more machines. So yep, yeah, yep. The intent is to make sure that that there's not because of that growth that there's not. You know uh, this huge uh, funding deficit in terms of what that what impact that had on local governments, and I think we need to make sure to take care of that aspect of it, and I think we will. And with my machines, I pay everything cash for everything. I, I don't only have to bill, but with the personal property tax, it was in effect. I was leasing those machines from the state of Michigan, even though they were paid for, regardless of the age of the machine. Right. Mm -hmm. I was still paying like renters' with their de depreciation. And as far as PA 51 goes, it's kind of a delicate dance that we're doing with the reps from all over the state. I know Representative Yarick from um, Macomb Township from Richmond had a, has a bill that was addressing it, but there has to be, there has to be, I hate to say this, there has to be some reason that the people from this area, Southeast Michigan, the SEMCOG people, which we don't all agree, anyone who's a, you know a rep from an, a SEMCOG area, um, but there has to be a reason that we can hold people in the northern, the representatives from up north hostage over a bill to get them to agree to change something in PA 51. It's that, it's that much of a political maneuver to get that funding changed. And I just, on, quite honestly, don't know if it will ever happen. Did you have a question? Yeah. What, uh, anything can you do about inheritance tax? Like, for example, I have property from my father, and you have to dispose of it within two years. Michigan doesn't have the inheritance tax. That's a federal. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I was just wondering, yep. and is there anything help you can do for the seniors? In, in what we're, well, well, and let's, well, I think this is a good, important discussion to have as it relates to health care. Um, you know, Bill Schutte has been attacked by Gretchen Whitmer, um, who mm -hmm. says that he wants to get rid of, um, get rid of pre-existing conditions coverage for those individuals, and that nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, Bridge Magazine did a True Squad, uh, th that uh, True Squad investigation, finding that that was very misleading. That that accusation, because they go back for four years. Having and, and Bill has said publicly that we have to protect people with pre-existing conditions, and I think that's really important on that health care front. Um, as it relates to senior citizens, um, as it relates to senior citizens, when we provide tax relief, um, 
for everybody, I think that's important for our seniors to be able to um, to be able to be a part of as well. I know he supports um, repealing the uh, repealing the elimination of the um, exemption on uh, income taxes for uh, for pu public pensioners, but that's I mean that's only a small amount of people uh, that that we're dealing with, and so I think I think. In that regard, providing if you repeal, if you re is successful in repealing that, um, that uh, or I should say reinstating that exemption um, for public pensioners on their retirement income, um, I think it's still important to provide tax relief for everybody across the board. Uh, I'm just trying to auto insurance right now, our system that we have set up is really a disadvantage for our senior citizens who have health care coverage you know, under, under Medicare. Well, the premiums they're paying are for this unlimited personal injury protection for their medical coverage. So they're 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 paying for coverage that that when they already have uh, cared for under Medicare. And I think I think when we reduce those auto insurance rates, I think that's a break for our seniors as well. And we just have to, as Attorney General Bill Schutte has been very diligent and deliberative about fighting um, elder abuse and making sure that we're taking care of our elderly population. I think it's important too, uh, going through the budget cycle, I know that he is supportive of the, um, the My Choice Medicaid waiver that keeps seniors in their homes longer um, rather than sending them to uh, to care facilities um, it's just another way of providing you know providing outcomes for them for the money that we spend so I know he's been supportive of that as well so my husband's on pension and Social Security and they tax everything mm -hmm. Any other questions before we, um, we'll stick around for just a few minutes and mix and mingle and just I'd love to hear from you. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.